a very warm welcome i hope you are all having a very nice evening here in bangalore and uh, enjoying this fr community uh, the title of my presentation is embarking on embedded adventures a beginner's guide to open source and fr so let's get started uh, so okay who am i well i am definitely not spider man i am akarshan kapoor i am a third year undergraduate in the department of data science at iit mandi i am relatively new to open source uh, compared to all the people who are here all the experts who are here i have been working in the open source communities in since the last one or uh, one or two years and this is my first talk in the zephyr meet and i am ready to network and hack overall this is my second talk i have already given a talk in the ubuntu conference in latvia that was held uh, based on the google summer of code project that i had implemented so yeah i am I, i am a bit nervous but i am also excited to be part of such a big community cool so let's start from the beginning what sparked the beginning of this journey well i do remember that it was uh, in october of 2022 that my seniors introduced me to a festival known as the hacktober fest well hacktober fest is a open source festival wherein you can go ahead look for different organizations the organizations open up your good first issues you have linear algorithmic changes that you can go ahead and contribute to so i went ahead i made four pull requests on the same and i ended up getting a lot of stickers and a cool t-shirt as well so that was my introduction to open source Uh, okay now what do i do from here i asked my seniors again so they introduced me to another program the program was called the google summer of code program the google summer of code program is basically a launchpad program for any student developer who wants to contribute to open source as well as earn a proper stipend so uh, i i found an organization called the linux foundation it was really intriguing for me really nice i went ahead i uh, checked out the different sub organizations that the linux foundation had i went ahead and solved some issues on open printing open printing is the sub organization under the linux foundation so i went ahead solved some issues and finally ended up landing a project with google uh, with uh, under the google summer of code program cool so this google summer of code program along with another software program that i developed during the summer i ended up submitting uh, submitting to a international conference this conference uh, accepted my proposal and got i got the chance to give my very first talk in an international conference at the ubuntu summit in 2023 and after since then i have been moving forward i have been involved in a lot of hackathons uh, winning a different lo lot of different hackathons and coding up lot of projects and now i'm here this is my second developer talk in the zephyr meet so i'm really Really excited for the same. Cool. Thanks. So, uh, moving ahead, uh, I'll, I'll like to give you all a brief introduction to my GSoC project. So, if you if you want to go ahead, you can scan this QR code. You can check out my GSoC project as well that I implemented. To talk a little bit in brief about it, you know scanners, right? Scanners are used for scanning, right? So there are two types of scanners. One are legacy scanners, another are like uh, the new scanners. So to implement scanning through an operating system, you need scanner binaries or scanner drivers. So let's suppose we completely remove the drivers from the system. We make the entire scanning procedure driverless. So that was the goal of my GSoC project. Apart from that, uh, the driverless system that we make cannot be suitable for all type of scanners. You know, legacy scanners. Some legacy scanners will definitely need uh, scanner binaries to support them for scanning. So to enable all the driver scanners as driverless and also to enable driverless scanning as a complete package was an entire Google Summer of Code project for me. apart from that i also developed a state of art front end in react uh, this uh, was basically a metadata extraction tool that allowed users suppose you get the scanned image right we all get the scanned image the image go somewhere in the operating system and gets lost right so what happens we get the scanned image from the scanned image we extra uh, we use the ocr pipeline we have an optical character recognition pipeline that extracts all the text from it apart from that after taking the text we pass it through uh, uh, a natural language processing pipeline the natural language processing pipeline pipeline is basically based on tokenization lemmatization and a lot of different hugging face models as well so those of you who are you know more active in the uh, ai community as well can correlate as well so let's suppose i have my passport i get the scanned image of the passport i can easily store that in a proper database that's based on flask in a flask backend and after that we extract all the information from the passport my name is akarshan it gets stored as passport akarshan kapoor so voila you can go ahead and search according to the terms that are even there inside the technology 
inside the image let's suppose you go ahead and scan the image of a dog right so uh, a general scanned image of a dog what you can do is basically go ahead type image of a dog and it will so show the all the scanned images that were present in the dog these are possible through the ai ai community that uh, ai models that are present in the model Cool. So the entire software along with the front end, the metadata extraction tool and the scanner back end uh, created a so sort of a scan universe and I named it as the scan universe. This was the project that I submitted in the Ubuntu summit. Okay, so how did I get introduced to Zephyr? Well, it was again during a conference like this only. Uh, we were hosting an open source conference in IIT Monday. That's my college. So uh, we were hosting an open source conference. The conference was uh, Opportunity Open Source. So a lot of uh, developers from the Linux Foundation, from Canonical Ubuntu, they came there and gave introduction talks about all the things. Right? So I came to know about Zephyr. Here's Mr. Jonas. He introduced, he also gave a talk over there. He gave a talk on getting started with Zephyr. So uh, that was my first, you know, the first time I got introduced to Zephyr. I came to know that it was basically an RTOS uh, ecosystem that was made by the developers for the developers. So it was a small footprint kernel for, you know, resource constrained and embedded systems. And one thing that I did not know up till then was that uh, uh, operating systems could not be supported on different uh, architectures. That was what my point of view was. I was like, okay, Mac OS is there, it's supported on ARM and Intel. Okay, you have Intel, it is supported on MIPS. RTOS was a completely different ball game for me uh, because it supported a variety of different architectures including Intel x86, ARM v6, v7, MIPS, uh, RISC-V, etc. Cool. So, uh, many people are ex uh, experienced with Zephyr here, so this slide might be redundant, but this was actually made for the college community that I am in. So if you don't know where to start, the best thing will be to go uh, go to the documentation part of Zephyr, where you can get started by reading the uh, you know re reading the basics of Zephyr. Before you dive into Zephyr, I will still recommend that you understand the very basics of system design. You understand the difference. You understand what is a kernel. You understand the difference between monolithic and micro kernels. Apart from that. Uh, scheduling, threading, etc. Uh, Zephyr also uses a data structure for uh, hardware management use, uh, called as device tree. Uh, you know, knowing about this actually helps while developing with Zephyr. Apart from that, knowing about Zbus and RTIO is also a plus. Uh, the West package is a package manager that you can go ahead and, you know, develop with. Apart from that, uh, if you know you have gone ahead and studied the how understanding the Zephyr works, you can actually go ahead and start developing with Zephyr, hacking with Zephyr. So I had, a, I luckily had a board, a Fitech real board. So the very first program that I run, I ran on the Fitech real board was the Hello World program or the Blinky program. So I compiled it for the Fitech real board and, and it ran. So here's, you can scan this QR code if you want a detailed guide on getting started with Zephyr or you know how to actually install Zephyr on your operating system. I compiled it for my college community and many people have started contributing to Zephyr in the Google Summer of Code project as well. So the upcoming Zephyr projects for me, well, I have an upcoming internship in Germany where I'll be working on embedded systems for wastewater flow management uh, in pump monitoring systems. Apart from that, I'm also thinking of contributing again to the Google Summer of Code project in 2024. There's the sound open firmware project that I would like to contribute. So all in all, I'll, ha I'll be having a pretty busy summer uh, this year. And I'll be also going on a semester exchange in Germany to work on the internship as well. Cool, so I hope you all like this talk. I was a bit nervous, but I ho hope you all connected with me. You can go ahead and connect with me on LinkedIn over here. Here's the link for the same. Thank you, thanks a lot.